Okay, let's go ahead and find the angle of this triangle. So uh, we're given a triangle, and it's a particular type of triangle. And the information that we have is the length of this leg and the length of this leg. But we want to find the angle, the missing angle here. So some of you might be thinking, okay, this triangle, this is a right triangle, and that's excellent. And it is. That means this is 90 degrees. So you might be thinking to yourself, well, should I be using the Pythagorean theorem, this a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared? Well, you definitely want to be thinking about the Pythagorean theorem uh, in terms of anytime you see a right triangle, this should kind of pop up in your memory uh, because this can, can assist you uh, in solving for angles. And you'll see this as you uh, uh, study more of these type of problems. But in this particular case, this is not going to uh, really help us because the Pythagorean theorem um, helps us solve the missing sides of a right triangle. And we're trying to find uh, an angle. Okay, so this has nothing to do with angles. Of course, it can assist us uh, in particular problems. So we're going to need some other techniques, some other tools here. And those tools are going to involve basic trigonometry. So some of you are, might, might be kind of scared. You might, it's kind of scary, right? Like, oh my goodness, trigonometry? Uh, we're going to learn trigonometry? You know, it's, it's so advanced. It's so, now listen, you got to relax, all right? This stuff does not have to be scary. And um, what we're going to be talking about here is basic, basic trigonometry uh, to include the sine, cosine, and tangent functions or uh, trigonometric ratios. And we're going to use one of these guys here to solve this problem. So if you are uh, new to trigonometry, stick around. I think you'll find this interesting. But, uh, you know, if you're studying uh, problems like this, well, then obviously you're already probably using basic trigonometry. Now, if you want to kind of play along and do the problem on your own, you will need a scientific calculator, something that has these buttons uh, on your calculator. That's a scientific calculator. Uh, it can be a graphic calculator, but you do need these basic trigonometric functions. And I'm going to get into all of this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can check out my math help program. I've found the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus different math courses. I have all the main courses like uh, pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, algebra 2. Uh, I'm going to be launching pre-calculus here shortly, but I have a lot of courses in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, GRE, GMAT, uh, maybe the CLEP exam, ACUPLACE or ALEX, uh, teacher certification, like a praxis exam or nursing entrance, TEAS, there's so many exams out there that people have to take uh, that involve a lot of math. And if you don't get to the math section, on these particular exams, you don't pass the exam, and that has uh, serious consequences. So um, if you're studying for any of these uh, exams, uh, just go to my site. I should have, um, you go to my course catalog, I should have the exam you're looking for. If I don't, drop me a line, and I'll help you out the best I can. Uh, I also do a lot with independent learners, like homeschoolers. I have a great homeschool learning system, and then I help those of you who are just struggling in your math class. Now, uh, one thing that I can't do for you, that you must do for yourself, and that is the following. Uh, you have to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching mathematics, one thing is apparent to me, those students who take fantastic math notes almost always do very well in math. And the reverse is true. Those students who think they have this, like, uh, superpower, photographic memory, you know, they're like, I can just watch and I'll remember everything. They kind of, you know, uh, talk themselves into having this superpower. That's not the case, okay? Believe me when I tell you, if you uh, you think you have that power, you won't have it for long in terms of more advanced math. There's just too much information. But, you know, during class, people like to do what? Well, let's just be honest. They like to look at their cell phone. They like to talk to their best friend in class. And they're like, you know what? Uh, their best friend over here and say, hey, listen, don't talk to me because I'm trying to take notes. And then you say, okay, I won't talk to you because I need you to take the notes because I'm going to look at your notes. Listen, I did all of that. And well, I didn't do the cell phone part back in the 1980s because those guys weren't around, at least not the cool smartphone. So I get that you're totally distracted. Okay. Uh, but you and only you can fix that uh, situation. All right. You have to learn how to focus. 
uh, being focused is the key to success in anything. And the way to keep you, uh, yourself focused in mathematics is to be engaged in note taking. So try to make your notes like perfect, right? If you uh, do that, everything is going to go smooth for you. Uh, but in the meantime, you still need something to study from if you don't have great notes right now. So I offer uh, notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so if you uh, want to try this problem on your own, this course is kind of uh, kind of scribble scratch right here, but here is the problem. Uh, you'll need a calculator, uh, but uh, go ahead and uh, pause the video if you want to go ahead and give this a try on your own. I'm going to get into this now. Okay, so if you don't want to see the solution, pause the video. But let's talk first about basic trigonometry. Okay, so what are we going to need here to solve this problem? Well, we're going to need to uh, have a basic understanding of something called these trigonometric functions called sine, cosine, and tangent. These are the basic trigonometric functions uh, we call them uh, trigonometric ratios as well. And here I have a little saying. Okay, it's a super famous saying. I bet your grandparents learned this back in high school, way back in the good old days. Um, it goes like this, so katoa. And you might be saying, oh, okay, I don't even know what this guy's talking about. Well, what this stands for is so it stands for uh, the sine is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And tangent is the opposite over the adjacent. So let's let's kind of put some definition on this right now. So here is our angle, okay? When we're looking at a right triangle, we can kind of define the sides of this uh, triangle. Now, in a right triangle, the longest side, okay, the longest side of the right triangle, and that's going to be opposite of the 90 degree angle, okay, it should be obvious this is the longest side. This is H, okay, this is called the hypotenuse, all right? Now, here is our angle, the leg or the side that's next to the angle, okay, right here, this is called the adjacent side, and then the side opposite of that angle is called the opposite side, okay? So anytime you're looking at an angle, you'll be able to determine the opposite side, the adjacent side, and the hypotenuse in terms of a right triangle, okay? So let's go back to this uh, little saying, uh, so katoa. So the sine of angle X will be equal to uh, OH, uh, opposite this one, over the hypotenuse, okay? So uh, this is the opposite, that's the hypotenuse. So that's what the, uh, the sine of that angle is defined as, all right? This is why we call these trigonometric ratios because a ratio is just basically a comparison of two, um, uh, two values, okay? A fraction, if you will, okay? So in here we have cosine. Cosine would be the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So if I had the actual um, uh, legs, okay, if this was, let's use an easy one here, a three, four, five right triangle, and these are actual uh, lengths, we can kind of, you know, calculate these out. And then tangent is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, okay? All right, now, these are our, uh, kind of our options here. We have the sine, the cosine, and tangent, but uh, if we can uh, use one of these, or we can, if we have enough information to um, use one of these trigonometric functions, then we could solve for the angle. So let's go back to our problem here. And let me ask you, what sides do we have? I have this angle, but I have this side and this side. So what are those sides? Well, this is the opposite and this is the adjacent. So I'm gonna need to use the trigonometric function that involves the opposite and the adjacent. And now let's go take a look at our options. Which one involves the opposite and the adjacent? And if you said tangent, I would say fantastic, you're paying attention, and that is exactly right. We need to use the tangent, okay? So the tangent is TOA. It's defined as the opposite over the adjacent. Now, with the, armed with that information, let's get to the problem. Okay, so uh, now, again, we're going to use the tangent. So we can say the tangent of this angle is going to be equal to, remember, TOA, T-O-A, the opposite, so that's 5, okay? That will be this, uh, that's going to be the opposite value here in a second. And then the adjacent is 7, okay? So let's go ahead and plug this in. 
So the tangent of this angle here is 5 over 7. So, you know, how is this going to help us uh, uh, find the angle? Well, well I'm going to show you this now. So go into your little calculator and take 5 and divide it by 7. You're going to get a decimal, and I'm going to kind of round it off here. You're going to get 5 divided by, five divided by 7 is going to be 0.714285. This continues on, but let's just go ahead and stop it with these uh, six uh, digits. Now, a couple of things you need to know. The, the more digits I write of this value, uh, the uh, more accurate my answer will be. Okay, that's just kind of, you know, you don't want to use like 0.7 or 0.714. Put in, you know, I would say a good amount of digits, maybe at least six digits to get the uh, most uh, accurate answer. All right, so we're saying the tangent of this uh, angle here, okay, whatever it is, is 0.714285. Now we have to use our calculator to ask a question. Okay, now here's the question we're gonna ask our calculator. We're gonna say, all right, Mr. Calculator, tell me the angle, what angle, here I'll write it out here, what angle has a tangent equal to 0.714285, okay, it's because if I can find that angle, right, what angle has a tangent that's equal to point, uh, 0.714285? Because this angle here, I'm like, all right, mystery angle, I know you. Uh, I don't know your actual angle measure yet, but I do know that your tangent is 0.714285. So, you know, I'm going to figure you out. Uh, what I'm trying to, you know, uh, answer the question is what angle has a tangent equal to 0.714285. Well, this is where you need to use the arc tangent. Okay, it looks like this. Um, it's a little tangent with a negative one, and each one of these trigonometric functions has this. So you can have uh, the sine arc sine, you can have arc cosine like that, and then you can have arc tangent. Now, the way you get to this on your calculator is on your uh, calculator, you'll have a tangent button, but you also have a second function on your calculator. And if you look, like here's your button uh, on the, like the face of the calculator, you should, see, you should see something like this, okay? So you'll have to kind of play with your calculator. You can use, these, uh, use this here as an example to know how to use it. So if I plug in, or if I hit the second function and I bring up our tangent, this guy right here, and I uh, put in this uh, decimal, Okay, this is going to tell me what angle has a tangent that's equal to 0 0.714285. So I plug this into my calculator. By the way, it's very important uh, that your calculator is in degree modes. We want our answer in degrees because you can have your calculator in radian modes, which uh, will give you a different answer. And then you'll end up with one of these, these little sad faces, and that's not good. Okay, so when you're working in degrees, uh, you'll have to uh, put your calculator, make sure it's in degree mode. It should be in degree mode by default, okay? Um, if it's in radians, that means you're kind of messing around. Now, you'll also need to know how to work with radians, but that's for a different uh, topic. So just make sure your calculator is in degree modes because our answer is going to be in degrees. Okay, so we're going to uh, plug this into our calculator. It's not the tangent. It's going to be the arc tangent, this tan negative 1. You plug in your decimal just like this, and you hit enter, and this uh, pops out. Again, I'm rounding, but you're going to get 35.53 degrees. Okay, that's a little degree uh, sign right there, and that is the answer. Okay, 35.53 right here, 35.53 degrees. Okay, now, the uh, more digits I use in terms of, of calculating 5 over 7, the more accurate uh, this becomes. Okay, so you just need to know that as well. So you don't want to round off uh, too much. You don't want to use 0.7 because this answer won't be as accurate. But this process here, um, this is how you find um, angles of right triangles. There's, a, there's some kind of special case techniques, but this is basic trigonometry, okay, using uh, basic trigonometric ratios that we just kind of covered. So if you've never taken trigonometry or you didn't know anything about it, well, this is a good little introduction to you. And uh, boy, look, what a mess I made over here. Let's go and erase this here <laughs> so we kind of uh, think. Now, when do you study trigonometry? All right. Uh, if some of you are out there are like, well, when, when am I going to see this? Well, typically, you'll start studying 
basic trigonometry and geometry. Okay, that's pretty common. But then when you move on to uh, courses like, there's some courses called Algebra 2 Trigonometry, but typically this is uh, more or less uh, covered in like a pre-calculus course. Because that's uh, really when you're going to uh, get into it. But this basic trigonometry stuff, you will see in geometry, at least most high school level uh, geometry courses. Okay, so if this video was interesting, and now we know, hopefully we're not scared of this anymore, we have a happy face. If you like this video uh, and you're like, oh yeah, this was useful, well then please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. Been on YouTube for a long time. Uh, 10 plus years, I, I know I have over a thousand videos. I stopped counting. My job, what I'm focused on, is trying to teach math in a clear and understandable way. That's my mission. And nobody should be failing math, okay? Uh, you know, if you're failing or if you're struggling, take a look at your notes, improve uh, your note taking, and then talk to your teacher, get more help. But you're gonna have to take the initiative, right? Go out and find instruction that you like. If you like my teaching style, then I have tons of videos organized on my uh, playlist there. You can just you know learn about a lot of different topics, but my best math help will always be in my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.